Welcome to Underground Storage Tank Compliance. This is a series where I want to talk to everyone about Underground Storage Tank Compliance and some of the things that we'll see at gas stations outside of Underground Storage Tank Compliance. Um, we're going to start off this series. I'm going to break it down in little bits so it's easy to access so you can find whatever portion you want to see whenever you want to see it. Uh, we're going to cover UST regulations in the United States primarily 40 CFR 280. We'll cover a lot of U.S. gas station information outside of that uh, as we get further into the series. And then just more information as it comes up and we talk about it. And if you guys have questions and you pose any questions to me, I can then address those. We'll start off with the tanks. We're going to do a series of uh, videos on tanks. We'll start with Tanks 101, which is just the basics of, of underground storage tanks. And then 201, installing underground storage tanks. And 301, the US EPA's accepted leak detection methods for underground storage tanks. Then we'll talk about the repair and removal of underground storage tanks. And then we'll talk about things that may have been outside of the, the other topics that we hadn't covered. So we'll do a mastering underground storage tanks or a 501. And we'll do the same type of thing for piping. Piping under 101, just the basics of what an underground storage tank piping is. 201, how we install underground storage tank piping. The leak detection methods in 301. And then 401, the repair and removal of underground storage tank piping. Then we'll do an Another section of 501, which we just cover all the things that maybe we missed throughout the other series. Then we'll go into our underground storage tank compliance with the 101. We'll basically focus on record keeping, which that's a really long topic, so I may break it down into different categories of record keeping just to keep the video shorter. And then the 201, what kind of trainings are required for people that do underground storage tank compliance? But we're talking about mostly the managers, the store associates that work at these uh, retail convenience stores or work at emergency generator storage tank systems. Then we'll do one about 301, about the inspections and maintenance required for underground storage tanks. Uh, then the leak detection will encompass all the other leak detection stuff. Some of the things that are leak detection that may not be um, specifically for pipes or tanking, but still part of the leak detection system. Uh, then we'll do mastering underground storage tank compliance. And there'll be some equipment things that we probably haven't discussed yet, like sumps, spill buckets, um, containment systems, different components of equipment that we'll have to cover um, in different sessions that we'll get to. We may do a 101 on uh, overfill prevention, do a 101 on um, leak detection prevention for sumps and spill buckets. And then we'll go into our PhD series or the 600 series. We'll cover some of the more complex topics like cathodic protection, uh, choosing a tank for a retail facility, uh, the tank life cycle, how long the tank should last, what types of tanks will last the longest. And we'll cover some of the air compliance issues that you have to be familiar with at gas stations. Stage one vapor recovery, stage two vapor recovery, the NESHAP um, vapor series. Um, we'll talk about weights and measures at the dispensers, things that you have to know for weights and measures and uh, quality of fuels at the dispensers. We'll cover the Petroleum Equipment Institute's RPs, the Focus on things, the gas station, the RP500 for the dispensers, the 900, the 1200. Then we'll cover some National Fire Prevention Association guidance, the NFPA 30 and 30A. And we'll answer any of your questions that may come along the way. And we may do more videos based upon comments, suggestions, uh, outside influences, or just ideas I have as we go through the series. And the one thing that I 